memory of wool. I am very useful to the mankind. I save you all from chilly winters. The sweaters, socks, shawls etc. made out of me to keep people warm and nice. My clothes are very stretchy. Did you all recognize me? I am a ball of wool. To tell my story, I shall take you to Pehelgam, situated in Kashmir Valley. Ramu and his father have gone from Maharashtra to Amarnath Yatra. They have come to visit Pehelgam and Kadir is their guide. In this video, you will learn as to how wool is manufactured. The expanse of this valley is so big and look at the beautiful scenery. Bye. This is called Beta Valley. The movie Beta was shot here. Really? What a beautiful scenery. Ah, I remember the movie. Look, father, there is a shop of woolen clothes. Shall we buy something for mother? She could not come with us. Bye. My father rears sheep and we have a shop too. Shall I take you there? Okay, let us go to Kadar's shop. It is my father's shop. He runs the shop and my uncle manages the sheep rearing unit. Come in. I have the best of the pashmina shawls for madam and lot of woolen clothes. You can pick any of your choice at very reasonable rates. Pashmina, this is so expensive. I never thought shawls will be so expensive. The best quality shawls are the Pashmina shawls and they are soft, light and they are very good for the skin. You will not get any allergy. Please have a look. This is indeed a very soft shawl. Father, why is it called a Pashmina shawl? Let me answer it. This wool is derived from a special goat called the Pashmina goat and this is a high quality wool. Why did I think that only sheep provide us wool? Baba, black sheep, have you any wool? Isn't this the poem, father? How many times I haven't read this? Are you aware, Ramu? There are many animals who provide wool apart from sheep. Goats, yaks, camels, etc. are several animals that give us wool. Yes, sir, you are right. Children, while Ramu, his father and Kadir are checking on the items in the shop, can you all enlist the number of items that can be made from wool? I am getting interested in the woolen things now. Father, I know that the sweaters we have worn are of wool, but these are all so rough. Why is it like that? You have observed well, the quality of wool depends on the animal from which it is produced. Wool is nothing but the hair of animals? Yes, but different animals have different qualities of hair. You are right, sir. Even in a sheep, there is rough hair near its beard and soft hair closer to its skin. So different products are made out of the coarse hair and soft hair. If my guess is correct, this carpet on which we are sitting is made out of coarse wool and this sweater out of soft wool. Look at this jacket. It is made out of yak wool. This is slightly coarse. There are different qualities of wool. This is only for 300 rupees. This means that lesser quality of wool is cheaper and coarse. And better quality wool is soft and expensive. This is absolutely correct. Very good observation. Like how we will have good hair if we eat well 
I'm sure the quality of wool also depends on the food animals eat. Very correct. We feed our sheep pulses, corn, oil cakes and jowar so that their hair or fleece are of good quality. So much effort goes into the sweaters we wear. Children, can you think how I keep you all warm? Father, how does a small hair on the sheep's body become such a big wool ball? Sir, if you have time, please come to my house in the evening. We produce wool and then make shawls. I will be happy to show you the process. Thank you, Kadar. We shall surely come to your house. Sir and Ramu, you are welcome to my house. He is my uncle Ahmed Khan. Namaste ji. My son is very excited to know the process of wool production. We first shave off the hair of the sheep along with the upper skin. Does it not hurt the sheep if its skin is shaved? We get hurt if there is a small cut in our skin. The uppermost skin is dead, so it doesn't hurt the sheep. Looks like the sheep are happy that they are being shaved. It is hot here, so they must be feeling nice. Oh yes, we shave the hair once in a year and only during summers. as it is hot yes i noticed that the animals that live in cold chilly regions have a lot of hair in comparison to animals in the plains looks like it acts as a sweater to them yes you're right the sheep's hair protects them from cold the color of the sheep is either white brown or black How come we have so many colorful sweaters? Do they color them? Yes. After we remove the hair, which is called shearing, we put the hair in the machine and clean it for dust and grease. This is called scouring. Then when do they color the wool? We send the clean hair to factories and their burrs are removed. and wool as per quality is separated it is then dyed or colored do they make it into threads then yes it is made into yarn and then rolled as woolen balls thank you so much for spending so much time with us i will buy a shawl from here for my wife she will definitely like it Thank you Chacha ji and Kadir I learned so much Thank you sir It was our pleasure that you came here Bachcho aasha hai ki aapko yah video pasand aaya hoga Is video mein aapne seekha ki main oon utpadak janwaron ke baalon se fabric part 2 learning objectives to learn about the types of animal fibers to learn about the life cycle of a silkworm hello friends isn't it so cold you should also wear something warm oh i'm sure you all know which animals hair is used to make woolen clothes do you know which is the softest and shiniest fabric correct silk Do you know that silk is also an animal fabric? Let us look for these answers through the help of this video. Rina and Maya had gone to visit their grandmother's house in their holidays. Let us go and see what are both of them doing. Maya was a voracious reader and Rina used to like to explore nature. Look Rina is looking at something in those trees. What is this? Looks like these are the caterpillars of the butterfly. 
let me ask Didi. Probably she would know. Didi, Maya Didi, please come here. What happened, Rina? Look, Didi, there are so many caterpillars here. These are mulberry trees, Rina. Look carefully. Last year when I visited Grandma, even I was very confused. But then Grandma told me that these are mulberry trees and silkworm stays on these trees only. Silkworms? Oh, I think like the silk cloth, these worms would also be soft and shiny. The silkworm makes the silk thread like we get wool from the hair of sheep. Similarly, we get silk thread from these worms. Look there, you can also see the mulberries on it. Rina looks around and goes and plucks a few mulberries. Friends, have you ever seen mulberry trees? Yes, you are right, Didi. Grandma had mentioned that the silkworms only eat the leaves of mulberry trees. That is the reason they stay on these trees. The silkworms are very spoiled. Look here, Didi. There are a few eggs also here. Rina, let us do an experiment. Really, Didi? What kind of an experiment? Let us borrow two cardboard boxes from Grandma. Then let us both place a few of these silkworm eggs in our boxes. Then we shall feed them with stomach full of mulberry leaves. Wow, Didi! These worms will be like our pets. We will also explore about their life cycle. Didi, be careful while picking up these eggs. Maya cuts a few stems of the mulberry tree very carefully and pastes them in one of the boxes. Come Rina, let us keep these eggs in each of our boxes. Didi, do you know how many days will it take for these eggs to hatch? Hmm, now we shall ourselves observe how many days does it take for the eggs to hatch. Both the sisters place a few eggs in their respective boxes carefully. I will keep my box outside. And I shall place mine inside. Next day. Didi, did something happen in your box? Rina, it will take at least two to three weeks. Be patient. Oh, it will take two to three weeks, Grandma. Rina and Maya used to wait every day for the caterpillars to emerge out of the eggs. After two weeks... Didi, look! The eggs in my box have hatched. Look, tiny caterpillars have emerged. I should quickly go and pluck a lot of mulberry leaves. They would be hungry. But the eggs in my box have not hatched. Why did this happen? You had kept your box outside in the warmth and I had kept it inside, isn't it? Yes, Didi. Do you think the eggs need a warm atmosphere to hatch? Yes, Rina. It looks like that. The butterfly eggs also need a warm place to hatch. I shall also keep my box outside now. Let us observe what happens then. After two weeks, I just went and saw the caterpillars, Didi. They have finished eating all the leaves. I think we will have to feed them with some more. Both the sisters observed their boxes daily. The eggs in Maya's box had also hatched as she had kept it outside in the warmth. After about one week, Look, Rina, the caterpillars in your box have become so fat after eating so much and the ones in my box still eat all day and night. Both the sisters start laughing. After two weeks, Look, Didi, the caterpillars in my box have become like a cocoon. I remember when in grade 4, we had studied about the life cycle of a butterfly we learned that the caterpillar similarly transforms into a cocoon. 
Wait, Rina. Let me get my science book. Look, Rina. In this picture, it shows how a silkworm makes a net around itself and transforms into a cocoon. Look, Didi. These cocoons have attached themselves to these stems. Is this another stage in their life cycle? Yes, Rina. It looks like that. Now we shall observe the caterpillars in my box to see how they transform. Both the sisters observe Maya's box carefully every now and then. After one week, Didi, Didi, look here. These caterpillars are spinning their head and releasing this thread-like thing. Yes, amazing. Let us ask Grandma, Daddy, why are these caterpillars moving like this? Children, the caterpillars are making a cocoon around themselves. And look, they are moving their head in the shape of the number eight. Is it that this thread-like thing is silk? Yes, children. Silk is woven from these threads. Wait, I shall show you one of my silk sarees. Wow, Daddy, it is a beautiful saree. Children, do you know that thousands of cocoon are required to make one silk saree? It would be a difficult task to weave silk. Yes, children. These silk worms are contribute in a big way to our weaving industry. Daddy, how is silk extracted from the cocoon? Children, to procure the silk thread, thousands of cocoons are required. They are kept in the sun and boiled in water. By doing so, the silk thread can be extracted from them. What? These cocoons are boiled in water. This is not a good thing. Yes, Maya, you are right. But do you know that a new method to procuring the silk thread has been found out? What is that new method, Daddy? It is the method through which the silk worms are not harmed in the process of making silk. It is known as Ahimsa silk. Wow, that is such a nice thing. None of the silkworms should be harmed in the process of making silk. When I grow up, I will try and find out new methods of extracting silk so that the silkworms are not harmed. <laughs> Very good, children. Wow, it was an amazing experiment. We explored about the life cycle of the silkworm on our own. It would be interesting to understand how is silk woven from silk thread. Maya and Rina keep observing the cocoons in their boxes till they become a month. So friends, I hope you must have gathered information about the silkworms through this video. I do want to know like Maya, how is the silk thread further woven into a silk cloth? So, we shall meet soon friends.